Hi there. Hi. I'm Terry Icklin, and I'm here with Sean, professional name Michael Byer, <laughs> a local man who has made an amazing film called Brandy's Canvas, and we're going to get into it. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but I want to talk about you. Okay. Okay. Yay, good subject. <laughs> uh, now, you are born and raised in Nevada County. Yes, I am. All right. Yes, and I was. And you have deep roots here, I understand. Family yeah. Family came here. Yeah, my, fa my family on my mother's side, the Byer family, came to uh, California in the late 1800s. Oh, wow. And they, uh, had a, they were cattle ranchers, and yeah. they had a huge ranch off of McCourtney Roads, just south of town, by the Byers Ranch, or 3B Ranch as it became. Uh -huh. um, and then that was there for quite a while. And so I grew up, you know, it's funny, I grew up on a cattle ranch and, you know, with deer, avid hunters and, you know, fishermen and, you know, milking cows and riding horses. Oh, yeah. And I moved to L.A. <laughs> go figure. Well, yeah, go figure. That was quite a... Uh, uh, Diversion to go off yes. in that direction, I think. So. Well, it's it's. I've always the, the arts have always intrigued me. You know, my my grandfather played guitar, my mother played the piano, oh, yeah. um, and nobody really was on the acting side of things. So my, my grandmother a little bit, but I just was always drawn to that. And in fact, my first acting was at the Nevada Theater. Is that right? Yes. Wow. Yeah, it was about wow. eight, and then we did um, in high school. We did you can't take it with you uh -huh. at the. Uh, at the Nevada Theater, so that was my first. That was it. Yeah, that was exciting. And you got the bug. So you graduated from Nevada Union. Yes, I did. Uh huh. And really had your interest in theater at that. I did. Point. I was a band and drama geek. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, they said a little few more meaner words. Oh, that, but we'll yes. leave that out. Yeah, leave yes. that out. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I did. I did. I I played in the marching band at the football games, and I played, you know, in different things, and then uh, did a lot, you know, all the plays and the musicals, and and I, and I loved it, and. I was just, this is, you know, it's what I want to do. It's what you want to do. So from there, you kind of morphed your way down to the Los Angeles area. Yeah, I moved to Sacramento first uh -huh. for a bit, and then uh, I hit L.A. in 1989. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Well, and I was on, I was there, and I was on set within two days. Oh, my goodness. Working, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and that was so exciting, you know. It was a real set. I was like, oh, this is, oh, I'm here, you know. And, and uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I was there to be an actor. And I, I, I was, you know, beating the pavement, as they say, for, mm -hmm. for a while. But I wasn't getting results, not that I wanted. And I decided I'm going to produce my own short film ah. uh, that I can star in to prove to others that I'm, that I'm a competent Good actor. Plan. So I started preparing that. I wrote the script, preparing it. As I got about, you know, two weeks out from doing it, I'm like, I can't star in this. I'm going to direct it. <laughs> and I'd only directed know. theater prior to that, but I'd been on set, so... I surrounded with myself with people that knew more than me. Good people. And I produced the short film, and it played all over the world in film festivals. Oh so, my goodness! Yeah. And what was the name of that? Film? It was called Shoulda, Coulda, Woulda. Just a coming of age, you know, romantic comedy kind of okay. thing. Just a fun little short film. But that really, that really set the tone. Like, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to direct. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, uh, I like to be in control. You know, ah. but I also like to collaborate. <laughs> I'm a collaborator, not a dictator. There you go. That's yeah. good. That's that's yeah. the way to go for sure. So then you've made a couple of other short films since then, kind of indie films. I've uh, I've probably done 15 short films, um, 10 music videos, oh. thousand webisodes, um, oh, great. stuff like that. I've done Randy's Canvas is, was my third feature film mm -hmm. that I did. I did uh, uh, one in uh, 05 down the PCH. I remember that. And I then we screened that. that at the Nevada Theater, yes. actually. Uh -huh. I did my second film, Resurrection Mary, a sort of a thriller thr uh, film. Uh, we actually screened at the Del Oro as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Randy's was my third. Great. Took a long time to get it made, but yes. um, yeah, it's it's. I'm very proud of that. The, the you know, response to it has been incredible. Great. Well, let's yeah. talk a little bit about okay. Randy's canvas. Sure. Now, now, this is a story of a young man who happens to be on the spectrum of autism. It's mm -hmm. not a documentary. It's not a biopic. Right. It's right. it's a it's a story. It's basically a love story. Yeah, it's a fictional story. Mm -hmm. Randy, Randy's a you know, early twenties kid, um, and he is a, an artist. He loves to paint. He loves to sketch. He loves to draw, and he uh, loses his job mm. at a gallery because a friend unknowingly hangs one of his art pieces of art in the gallery uh -huh. but the gallery owner considers that vandalism and terminates him and so uh -huh. he loses the job and and then in the meantime he, this gallery owner discovers his work likes him wants to mentor him meanwhile he meets this girl uh -huh. and um, kind of has a, 
has a crush on her and uh, he doesn't know how to deal with those emotions. Uh, the, the autism, uh, you know, is, is um, you know. Kind of gets in the way. Yes, and exactly. causes its own set of problems. And uh, I can imagine that would be a real difficult Well, it's, thing. you know, we, we interviewed a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam, uh, who plays Randy in the movie. Yes. He's, he's in Rhode Island. Um, <clears throat> we interviewed a lot of kids. He interviewed them there. I interviewed people here and did research. They don't know how to to deal with love. They don't know how to deal with that emotion. A lot yes. of them, that it's partly because people on the spectrum take things at face value. They don't understand metaphors. They don't read body language. Yes. Everything is very matter of fact. And they said, you know, you know, these boys like, I want a girlfriend. I just don't know how to do it. Uh, yes. You know, and and that was something that we incorporated into Randy's character. <clears throat> he has these feelings for the girl, but he doesn't know how to address them. Yes. You know, so that and then was, I'm sure how she reacts to him and he misinterprets another. her her reactions and and she wants to be kind. I'm sure she wants to be friends. Yeah, yeah. But he wants more than friendship. So, yeah. so yeah, so that sets up pretty a rich environment for you know everything that ensues. Right. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so tell me, I, I want to get back to your filming in Rhode Island yes. and that, but before that, I want to know what prompted your interest. You originally wrote this screenplay way back in 05. Yes. Yeah. And what prompted that? Um, an actor friend of mine, who happens to be from Nevada County, uh -huh. had said, you know, we had just, he played one of the roles in my film down at PCH. And he had said, we should do something about a kid with autism that moves to the big city. And that's all he said. That was it. That was that was literally the story. And me having kind of been dabbled in art myself, painting and whatnot, I thought, oh, well, I'm going to make this character an artist, mm -hmm. and he has, you know, and so on and so forth. And then that's when you know the the, the you know, story began, and then it just became Randy's canvas. I just that was the, I care I named the character Randy, and I thought yeah. Randy's canvas. Randy's, that's a and great it's a, name. It's a, it's a oh, I love the title, and it's a blank you know it's a blank canvas, a blank slate. Uh, meta metaphor, yeah. Yes. So, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Perfect, perfect. So from that, you've worked on it off and on as as many screenwriters do. You kind of set it aside for a while. And well, and I also brought in another writer friend of mine mm -hmm. uh, in uh, uh, I don't know a couple of years after. I just I felt I was I was happy with it, but I wanted a little bit more. Mm -hmm. so I, up I wanted bit. some fresh eyes on it. He's a, he you know talented writer. Um, and so we, you know, he, he collaborated with me on subsequent drafts. When we got closer to production, my producer also contributed to, to some of the drafts that, you know, the production draft, if you will. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm all about collaborating. I'm not, you know, it's what I do is ne necessarily going to be the be, you know, end all be all. I sure. want others to contribute. And, input. and second yeah. pair of eyes, as you say, or Absolutely. third, fourth, you know, but it's always yeah. great to, to get the, yeah. uh, somebody else's input on that. So then moving forward, you finally got up to 2016 yes. when you actually were ready to go into production and make the film. Yes, yes. And decided to shoot in Rhode Island because... We decided to shoot in Rhode Island about a year prior um, for a variety of reasons. I love California. Mm -hmm. I've born and raised, but it's very expensive to shoot in California. Oh, <laughs> Los Angeles. They do everything. <laughs> yeah, and and in Rhode Island, they have wonderful tax incentives, so you get a rebate on on the, the money you spend in the, in the state, and uh, it's it's a beautiful setting. We have these lighthouses and these beautiful beaches and mm. and, and different and different things, but it was very film friendly. Uh, we didn't pay for one location. We we shot in two art galleries for over a week. We didn't pay for that. We were able to shoot at a minor league baseball game. Which adds just production value to the film, mm -hmm. and and that was that was fun, fantastic. Also, all of our catering you have to feed your crew. All of our Better. catering <laughs> was donated. Great. Because we were you know benefiting autism, and it was just it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. It was just I mean, such a beautiful place to shoot friendly people. The film the state film commissioner and his uh, his vice president or whatever she is. Came to our set, gave all the crew baseball caps that said Rhode Island Film Commission. It was wonderful. And it was just, I mean, you Sounds can't beat the like support. Sounds like a yeah. tailor-made place for this. And then there was an institute or a program there or that you tapped into to interview some of Oh, the... we partnered with Autism Project Rhode Island. Okay. Uh, they're, in, they're in Johnston, Rhode Island, which is a suburb of Providence. And they uh, they were very supportive of the film. They had all uh, a bunch of their, their kids... Uh, work on the film as production assistants, as extras. A couple of them had a little featured role, and we had this one boy, CJ, that was our on set consultant. Oh, very good. Did I tell you this? I think I told you the story. It, CJ uh, 
worked on it. You know, he know he knows everything autism. He's on the spectrum, but he knows autism, you know, very very well. Mm -hmm. And he made sure we didn't, you know, mess it up. Yes. And Important. about three quarters of the way through the shoot, I said, CJ, you want to direct a scene? It was a simple scene, you know, no dialogue, just a simple scene. He's like, I'm not qualified. I'm like, you're Aww. you're qualified. If I say you're qualified, you can do it. Yeah. And he was he was nervous, but he agreed. And so I didn't say anything to the crew. We rolled camera. I look at him, and he very confident. He's like, and action. Yeah, Scene plays know. out. And I look at him again. He goes, and cut. <laughs> and the clue, you know, the crew breaks into applause. Oh, that's great. And a couple of days later, uh, we heard from his parents. He was about 18 at the time. And his his mom said. His self-esteem is through the roof. We haven't seen him smile like that in a year. Oh, how wonderful! Which was which was great. Oh, what a! Gift. And then when we screened it in Rhode Island uh, last October, mm -hmm. he was there on the red carpet taking pictures, and he was so proud. And you know, he's a very he's he's you know, very stoic mm -hmm. kid, mm -hmm. but he was very excited. So oh, that was goodness. really wonderful. Oh, that's yeah. what a great great opportunity for no, him. Totally, and, yeah, yeah kind of. Uh, put a little bow on your project yeah, and just you know, well. it, listen. He, he, you know, the, those kind of people you want to help, they don't necessarily have the same opportunities that I might help, mm -hmm. uh, might have. And, and I just thought that was nice, you know. Yeah, yeah very nice thing to do. So now we had the big premiere of the film locally here yes. in your hometown last weekend, and now it's going to be released wide. Tell me about the the release. How uh, does this work? It's it's a it's a three tier release with a film like this. Um, we will be on uh, paid VOD, video on demand, okay. uh, any of your pre premium cable channels, uh, satellite, uh, all that, uh, Amazon, not, not the prime streaming, but mm -hmm. you know, if you, you can rent it uh, or buy it, uh, iTunes, mm -hmm. uh, Xbox, Vudu, all of those places, okay. online retailers, um, be in some stores as well on, on the DVD. Uh, that, that's the first step, that's September 18th. Uh, next spring in April, we have plans for a broadcast television release in support of Autism Awareness Month. Oh, okay. And then when all of that's been done, then probably within about a year, it'll be Netflix uh, oh, and all of the, the subscription VOD mm -hmm. uh, uh, avenues. Oh, so great, great. so you, you, you release it in stages. Oh, okay. That's how that's done. And so now, when you have the premiere here and then... Uh, when I don't know how the uh, the monetary ramifications when you're on the the uh, pay-per-view type channels, mm -hmm. but your plan is to have proceeds go to benefit autism. Yes, yes. So it, tell us a little about that. Well, once once the uh, producers uh, make their money back that they that they put out of pocket sure. to produce the film, once that once they get that back, then all the profits in the future will go to autism charity. Oh, that's just so and we and we do local screenings like we did here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done them in Rhode Island. We'll do them in other areas, and and that, those will benefit local you know entities. Oh, uh, and great. then we'll partner with some of the bigger you know uh, we're we're in talks with Autism Speaks mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. So uh, you know we really want to just give back, and it's not a bad thing. Yeah, and from what I understand, even locally here, there's not a lot. I I've been doing a little bit of research. Um, and I've been told that, like locally, for example, we live in a rel relatively small area, that once kids are out of the high school age group, that there's kind of nothing for them to, to fall back on or well, to it's look interesting. forward to. Or... It's interesting that you mention this mm -hmm. because I, when I reached out to the local therapists and caregivers in the area, um, I said I would like to do a screening, but I would like it to benefit a local autism charity. Mm -hmm. There isn't one. Yeah. So we created one. Oh, you did? Yes, the Randy's Canvas Foundation. The Randy's Canvas And that'll be a local, initially a local Nevada County charity where kids can go and explore their creative resources. They can get, you know, information on higher education. They can learn to paint. They can learn to draw. They can learn different things. I'm going to come up in the holidays and teach acting classes. And oh, my gosh. I just so, got the chills when <laughs> you said that. I mean, so we, pre we, 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 we premiered that at the Del Oro afterwards. We, we, uh, we made a big announcement of that. So... We just decided, you know, hey, there needs that resource. Yes. So I'm very excited about that. Oh, that's so, wonderful. Yeah. Well, look how this has all come together. Look at this. I mean, you know, I mean. It's showing just the like love, right? Showing the love, exactly. <laughs> local, and um, I love that. I love the, the subject matter. I love the fact that you're local, and you've done a great job with this, obviously. Well, and I, I'm looking forward to, I didn't get to come to the premiere, but I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Well, you, you'll get to see it. And yeah, I mean, to, to you know, to premiere in your own hometown at the Del Oro Theater, which is, you know, yeah, that's where we all grew up, you know, locals went to see movies, so that's right. that was that was exciting. That's right. And then we'll put any information um, out about, you know, websites or, sure. you know, future 
um, when it's going to come out and all that. We'll tack all that onto the end. Oh, and we'll promote well. it extensively, absolutely. Great. But that's great. awesome. Thank great. you. Well, Sean, thank you so much. This has absolutely. been great. I've learned so much, and I really appreciate your time. Well, here we are. Here we are. All right. Thanks <laughs> thank so you. much. All right. Thank you. Take care.